Hi, I'm Tim Shryak and a Solutions Architect here presenting today about uh, configuration compliance and how we can achieve that as we go through uh, kind of a net DevOps journey. Little agenda for the day, talking about uh, this journey. Uh, how can we uh, work on moving from uh, using our skills and mapping those to goals that we want to achieve? Uh, how can we get into this configuration compliance? And then finally, looking at how we can actually start to implement it with a tool using such as Nautobot. If we start thinking about the journey as we're going through this net DevOps transition, a lot of us are maybe new to DevOps on the networking side. And there's a lot of things to achieve. Like you look at the screen, there's a whole lot of information here, starting on the left at the very beginning and moving all the way to finally to when we have a network automation platform requiring skills, goals that we want to achieve along with tools is how we're going to get there. So let's think about having a specific target in mind, somewhere to start. Because when you look at that first screen, it can be very overwhelming. Um, and particularly when we think of uh, automation in general, one of the things that first comes to us is we need to automate all the things. And we think I can't do that, so I have nowhere to start. There's no way I can ever achieve this. So let's break it down to something that is achievable and give you a really specific finite place to begin. A really great example we think is configuration compliance. This is a challenge that most every network operator faces. And how do we deal with ensuring that the standards we set are actually what's happening out in the real world and enforcing those standards. So kind of looking at this journey here, we're gonna move through this process of how we can do this and get from very the very beginning state to somewhere where we actually have full automation on our configuration compliance. Kind of highlighting the problems. Right. The, we have our standards that someone in maybe the engineering team or perhaps the architecture team has set, and we then proceed to promptly ignore them most of the time, uh, or at least part of the network isn't following those standards. So we have the intent that came from the, uh, the standard body, and then how, but how do we actually confirm that it's out there in the real world? Our goal, a purpose of configuration compliance tool is to ensure that these uh, policies and standards are continuously enforced in the environment. So that as we look at the actual state versus our intended state, we compare those and we get the report on the differences. Kind of looking at sort of as we go through this journey in most environments or many environments, that initial state where we start, the actual and the intended may not overlap at all. Um, commonly, we do often see as we move into a more mature, uh, say, environment, we will see some overlap between the actual and the intended states, with obviously our goal getting to be where we have complete overlap, where we have these both in perfect alignment. How do we solve this problem? This is probably, I think, one of the most common. We ignore it. Uh, I think pretty much all network engineers, this is our most common reaction to this problem, is we deal with it when we have to. Um, and in my, in my mind, I think we do this tactically. We're very, very busy. We can't do all the things every day. And so we ignore this problem because it's not kind of like the thing that's burning on fire right now. And so we ignore it until there's a problem or we get called out in an audit and there's some finding and we have to go remediate it. This, uh, option number two is the all hands on deck. And it is usually a reaction to the first option, which is someone in management gets a report in the audit and they say, fix this problem because we're not gonna pass our PCI audit or what have you. And we're gonna have a huge problem. We suddenly can't meet the needs of our customers. So everyone gets on board. We spend a day and a half full deck of everyone working to solve the issue. A better way. Let's use strategically placed automation to facilitate this process. So let's have automation in our environment that allows us to compare actual and intended and actually move forward through this process using the automation, offloading this busy work from humans. Kind of looking at an overall uh, solution overview and the components we have in uh, common, common types of environments here. If we look at the Nautobot application and how we implement this, we're starting using uh, configuration backups as the way that we get our actual state. Jinja templates providing our intended state. And from there, we are using that integration with Nautobot to combine these components and produce the report in the Golden Configuration app. High level summary there. Some different, drilling into each of these pieces. So as we look at the actual state, how do we actually get that state? Uh, we can get it from configuration backups is the most common way. Uh, potentially, you already have this in your environment, most likely, whether it's uh, rancid or oxidized, 
whatever tool you're using, maybe solar winds, doesn't matter. As long as we're doing those backups, great. Uh, we could use uh, Python or Ansible, or for that matter, not about platform itself. Where are the backups located? Uh, very, very commonly, these are out on a file share, uh, you know, somewhere on the network. The only requirement when we start looking at and automating this type of uh, capability from the backup perspective is that all we need to do is make sure those backups are stored in a repository, whether it's GitHub or Bitbucket, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be a repository of some form. So this is a relatively simple step, somewhere where we can start. Probably you already have this component. We just need to do one little piece, which is to make sure we've got those backups in a repository. The intended state. This is probably the more challenging piece, which is how do we express our intent in a way that the automation can ingest and then process. But we want to start somewhere. So do something, even if it's just as simple as make device specific configuration templates, that's okay to get started. Because this is a crawl, this is a journey, and we want to move through those stages of crawl, walk and run. Uh, we don't need to jump right to the end state of running. So over time, we can start to improve. We can uh, then move on to using templates. Uh, so rather than having hard coded data, you know, we can start using templates as our basis, perhaps Jinja templates. And then as we get better, maybe then we replace in those templates. Now we're using variables, pulling uh, dynamic data from our source of truth. Where finally now we are moving into the full world of automation of using sub templates that are rendered into master templates that then pull all this data from the source of truth. So again, think of this as a journey. Don't think of this, I have to start at the end state. You can start on this process today of configuration compliance with some of the things you have and a little bit of additional effort on uh, adding in some uh, intended state. How do we do this analysis? So we have the actual state uh, stored in our repository. We've got those intended states between the data and the templates. And we're making those comparisons of that data and producing the final compliance report. And this is the purpose of the Golden Config application. So in action, taking a look at you know, how this process is working and the flow that we go through, uh, looking here, you know, as we kind of start across the top there, we've got our intended state coming out of the source of truth with the data. And in this example, we're showing a couple of different options that we might have here. Uh, one is at here we're using uh, Ansible and uh, Jinja to then create our intended state. And down on the bottom, you can see the example there of network devices, and we're using Oxidize to pull the configuration from the devices and then run that through the compliance engine to produce the report. In the second example, we're showing, you know, it doesn't have to be oxidized or rancid. Uh, it could be potentially Ansible doing all the work. So maybe we're using Ansible to not only generate the intended config, but also pull the backups. And finally, yeah, another way, again, you know, really our framework and our idea here is to be super flexible and adapt to your environment, not force you to uh, learn some new tools or use some things maybe you're not familiar with. Use the things you already have. Um, but here we have yet another possibility of using the uh, not about platform itself to both render the configuration as well as to execute those backups. So the Not About Platform can handle those components of it as well, and then producing uh, our final compliance engine and report. Uh, for that lower work, uh, for the workflow on the intended config, <coughs> is it possible to, to put a workflow in that has something like Batfish in it, where you can actually validate it against what a known working configuration validation would be for a particular device type, so that you're not outputting something that wouldn't pass like, you know, something like Batfish in terms of saying like, this is a, a well-known good config, or is that something later or would that pop out after the compliance engine side? Uh, so this is, you're looking to actually confirm that our intended configuration is what we meant it to be? Or, or that it, it'll, it'll actually work on the device. I, just because you have a Jinja 2 template doesn't mean that it's actually <laughs> no work, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, so, uh, so. So here, and the, the purpose of this tool really is to take what we consider our gold standard and compare that to the actual. Um, how we get to that gold standard is not really part of the function of this specific application, but absolutely could be included as an additional component external to this particular function. Does that okay. make sense? Cool, yeah, thanks. So consider a uh, golden configs, or is, uh, do you also consider frameworks like NIST framework, best practices and things, and is there machine learning techniques in the background learning Yeah, from? So the tool is intended to be provided as a framework. Uh, so mm -hmm. here gives you the components that you can stitch these things together. Uh, so in the tool itself, we are not expressing intent or what your gold standard should be. We're providing you the mechanism by which you can do that. 
Mm -hmm. um, so how you come to your best practice or your gold standards is entirely up to you and your architecture team. Mm -hmm. um, and this just gives you a way that you can then uh, facilitate that comparison. Um, but it isn't intending to be all the things to everyone. So we don't provide that uh, necessarily. We're not incorporating those additional functionalities. Okay, thank you. And here we can look a little bit at some of the uh, demo as we move into this component. So here we can see starting off at the uh, main screen of the configuration compliance, we are looking at what we have available to us um, from our reporting. So looking at some high level information here of the devices in the environment, and you can kind of see a breakdown of configuration components, um, AAA, BGP, DNS, et cetera. Um, so another highlight kind of of the tool is it's giving us the ability to express our intended state uh, for individual com components of our configuration. We don't need to necessarily express our intent for all of the configuration. Uh, again, getting back to that idea of the crawl, walk, run journey, um, maybe today you can't start uh, doing golden config compliance on your entire configuration on all your devices. But what you could do today is start doing golden config compliance on DNS on maybe a specific device in one of in your environment, right? So start somewhere, um, even if it's small. So let's just kind of drill in and take a look at what we see here in the example. Uh, here, you know, we're looking at some DNS configuration and the intended state coming from our gold standard here of what our uh, DNS configuration should be. And uh, you know, someone out there in the actual state, and while of course, obviously, we really want to explore the space and fill it with more cowbell, um, that's probably not what our domain setting should be. Um, so you know, the, the Golden Config Appliance is making that easy for us, right, to understand. Uh, here's, here's the missing stuff, and here's some extra stuff maybe that, that shouldn't be there. Uh, of course, it's up to the human now to compare these things and make the decision. Is the template wrong, or is the device out of sync, and it should be corrected? So either way, we'll take a look at that and see how that should work. I am just going to scroll down to a little bit more complex example just to make this more obvious, um, but kind of really more helpful. Uh, here, you know, we're looking at a little bit more lengthy intended configuration and some actual configuration. Again, a little bit hard to kind of parse that by hand. Um, so the tool makes it super easy, right? Uh, just here's the missing stuff. Here's makes it easy for operations to understand where are the differences and how should we correct this. Quick question on that. Are yeah. you providing, uh, do you have the capability for providing regex? Um, Yes, absolutely. As well within that. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so we have the ability to both uh, express things that should be removed from the actual config, um, as well as to do that via regex expression. Absolutely. Yep. This is John Herbert. Can you specify, if you have multiple lines, can you specify that they have to be in the template in the order you stated in the intended configuration? You have your option, absolutely. You can, uh, uh, that's a toggle, um, whether it needs to be ordered or not. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have the ability to add additional fields into these compliance sets? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm thinking of associating it back to a specific security control ID so that when the security team comes to me and says, hey, are you compliant with whatever configuration? Um, I can go find the control ID and see everything that has that um, either conforming or non-compliant. So you're suggesting that we would map the intended states to a particular control? Yes. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, great question. Um, I can imagine a couple of ways we could potentially go about this. Um, as we express that intended state, we could uh, use in our parlance, um, in the Nautabot world, we're using what we call configuration context to express a lot of this. Um, they could either be named or potentially tagged with that control ID. Um, so you could make that mapping. Absolutely. Um, and what you see here, for example, again, this is 100% a a framework. So you're seeing examples here of things like DNS. This is completely flexible. You configure it for your environment for what makes sense for you. Great. Thank you. No problem. Just kind of continuing on this idea here, just to explore the rest of this particular uh, example. As we look at the device here that we were rendering this configuration against, you know, we can take a look and we can see, uh, you know, the more cowbell in there, which is obviously great fun, but uh, not really what we're looking for. Uh, so we want to put in, you know, IP domain uh, name, uh, and I'm drawing a blank on the actual uh, intended state. So we'll just go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so it's should be, you know, and of course, as an operator, you're probably doing this too, right? You're doing 50 things and you don't remember what it is you're supposed to do. Um, so come back in looking, you know, what's actually missing. It's IP domain name ntc.com. So easy enough to, uh, to add in there and get that corrected. 
uh, coming back now into the tool, right? So how can we actually, you know, render and check and see, did that work? Is all well. Uh, so making that super easy for operations, uh, you know, we know that we were happen to be working on the backbone router there. Uh, so we can just come over here and run the job that uh, runs this particular compliance. And we can run it ad hoc um, here in this case, because we're doing correction. We want to see, did it go well? Um, but of course, this can run on a regular schedule, just like any other job in Nautabot. So potentially you would run this, say, once a day or whatever makes sense in your business process. Uh, we can take a look at as that goes through its uh, cycle there, um, checking and making sure it's doing the backup here. We are running this all through the Nautabot platform. Uh, so doing that backup, getting into the repository, and then going through that uh, compliance check. So then we can go back to our report and we will hopefully see, yes, as all is well, uh, we've corrected our DNS setting. So now we know operations can now move on to the next thing, right? So trying to keep this as simple as possible. 